Today we have a tunable LED light bulb from Ketra, a maker of a high-end lighting that is based in Austin, Texas. Ketra's bulbs mimic natural lighting of their surroundings and can be configured to change their color temperature so they can do things like produce the glow of a sunrise or recreate sunset light, all while being completely dimmable down to zero light output. They do this all courtesy of a separate wall switch controller and configure software that communicates with LED bulb over a wireless link. Right. This is a high-end bulb that costs about $100. And to get the kind of color adjustments the bulb is famous for, you need a separate controller that is in the same price range. So you'd only be likely to find a Ketra bulb in lighting designed by architects or specialized lighting designers. But today we're just interested in what's inside Ketra's bulb that lets it get that super wide range of color temperature and versatile dimmability. The wall switch can tell the bulb to dim itself or change color over a, a Zigbee mesh wireless link, but the bulb will also dim from a conventional wall dimmer switch. In that case, the dimming waveform from the wall switch takes precedence over any dimming command the bulb has received remotely. One reason these bulbs are so versatile is that they contain a special controller chip that Ketra designed. This chip is proprietary, so we won't be able to say exactly how it operates or how the bulbs manage some of their tricks. But we can make some assessments about the approach Ketra designers took in creating their bulb. The first interesting aspect of the Ketra bulb is the way the LEDs are configured. They sit on a metal plate, as is generally the case with most LED bulbs, but they all sit inside a small hemisphere of silicone rubber-like material in the center of the plate. We've never seen an LED plate configured this way before. Most other LED bulbs contain LEDs that are scattered around the plate, but on the Ketra bulb, putting the LEDs in this small area concentrates their light. Then, there are diffusers and reflectors inside the polycarbonate bulb dome that shape and sort of modulate the LED light. Also, the LEDs you find on the Ketra bulb are much, much smaller than those LED bulbs use. A typical LED bulb generally measures on order of about an eighth of an inch square. The 20 LEDs in the Ketra bulb measure roughly half that size or even less. A look at the LED shows how the Ketra bulb manages to get a wide range of color temperature. The usual way of getting an LED bulb to put out different color temperature is to use different kinds of LEDs, each operating at a different color temperature. And that seems to be what Ketra does here. We found what seemed to be three different kinds of LED bulbs on the board. Ketra's product literature says the bulb light color gets measured 360 times a second to ensure the light output is right. Apparently those measurements happen thanks to four light sensors we found mounted among the LEDs on the plate. Also interesting is that the LED plate attaches to the bulb electronics through a connector. Most of the less expensive LED bulbs just solder wires from the PCB to the LED plate. Considering the Ketra bulb gets commands from a wireless link, there's something else interesting about that LED board. Most LEDs that have wireless transceivers have a hole in their LED plate. Through this hole pokes an antenna from the wireless transceiver, but the Ketra's bulb LED plate doesn't have a hole in it. The reason the Ketra bulb doesn't have a hole in the LED plate for an antenna is that the antenna is oriented in the other direction, toward the base of the bulb. The LED board is surrounded by a 1.4 ounce heat sink that seems to have been die cast out of pot metal. On top of it sits the metal plate holding the LEDs. So the wireless antenna stays inside the plastic enclosure, but it's oriented so it pokes out just past the metal heat sink. So the metal of the heat sink doesn't stop the antenna from radiating. When we removed the LED plate, we found that the entire LED board was potted in epoxy material. Potting is a common technique in LED bulbs. The potting material gives LED some extra structural rigidity and also serves as a way of enhancing the thermal conduction to the bulb's metal heat sink. But there's a problem with potting compound from the standpoint of radio frequency transmissions. Potting material severely loads any antenna it touches. So an antenna that's covered in potting compound just don't, won't radiate very well. And conversely, it won't pick up the microvolt level signals potentially coming from a Zigbee transmitter. But once we removed the potting material, we found a piece of foam wrapped around the wireless antenna. 
The foam was there specifically to keep the epoxy about a quarter of an inch away from the, the Zigbee antenna. And it looks as though Ketcher did one other thing to make sure there are good wireless connections to the bulb. The wireless board in the Ketcher bulb contains two ICs. The main chip is a Silicon Labs EM3585 Zigbee mesh transceiver. The second chip is a front-end module from Corvo that provides 11.5 dB of gain for received signals and 28 dB of gain for transmitted signals. That's a big boost. So it basically looks as though Ketra took out some of the insurance to make sure Zigbee signals had enough oomph to get through the potting material and around the metal formed by the heat sinks. That brings us to the topology of the LED driver circuitry. Ketra uses its own proprietary controller IC, so we can't be sure exactly how the LEDs are powered, but we can make a few guesses based on the components we found on the PCB. Markings on the LED circuit board say this is a non-isolated driver, but there's one sizable transformer on the board, so the transformer isn't there for isolation. That means the topology has to be one that employs a transformer for something other than isolating the LEDs. Other components of note are a big transistor and a 0.1 microfarad capacitor rated for 275 volts near the input, along with three inductors that are obviously storing some energy based on their rather beefy size. Also, there's a MOSFET near the input that looks big enough to handle the whole current load of all the LEDs. You might suspect that the inductors and the MOSFET might be handling power factor correction. The output part of the circuit is even more interesting. The Ketra bulb uses its own controller IC. Also evident on the board are two beefy MOSFETs that seem to be sitting in the secondary of the driver. But they aren't identical. They have a slightly different voltage and current ratings. And there is a third MOSFET in the area from a different manufacturer, which has ratings that differ from the other two. Because we found three different kinds of LEDs on the bulb, you might expect to find three identical driver circuits in the secondary of the power supply. But that just isn't the case here. In fact, it's difficult to figure out what the secondary of the driver circuit looks like. The topology of the bulb is quite interesting and still a bit mysterious, at least to us. For more teardown videos like this one, go to eeworldonline.com. Thanks for watching.